two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. Where was I? Uh, Marsha, yep, I got a whole plan worked out. You guys wanna help me? Glenn, hell yeah. How do you learn to make poison? Marsha, oh, I, uh, majored, majored in pharmacy in college. Glenn, really? Marsha, dot, dot, dot. Long silence. Yep. The screen starts to get all swirly as we transition to a flashback. Marsha is back in college, in a field, wearing a hella hippie outfit and trimming weed with a bunch of other people. A mix of college-age kids and senior hippies. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, isn't there more to that sentence? But no. Marsha singing joyfully. La 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 la, little friends in the forest. <laughs> all of a sudden, two big black, two big all black vans crash through the fields, mowing over a bunch of plants. <laughs> All the trimmers go running in panic in every direction as mas masked FBI agents in pitch black army uniforms go chasing after <laughs> them. Marsha ra races through the field as one of the agents chases, uh, chases after her right on her ass. He runs her down and snatches her, throwing a black plastic bag over her head. All the trimmers get dragged into the vans and stuffed into small cages. <laughs> They're all wailing and crying and their cages are labeled things like circus, salt mine, oil rig, etc. Oh yeah, like Pinocchio. <laughs> Random FBI agent as he lights a cigar. <laughs> uh, shut up, all of you. They keep crying. <laughs> FBI agent. I said shut up! It's all cap. Everyone goes quiet and just sniffles. FBI agent in husky smoker's voice. You thought it was so fun to be bad, huh? Well, look at you little freaks now. You see? Us good morale- uh, Us good moral having Christian folk will always come out on top. You can run, sinners, but you can't hide. <laughs> he chuckles like a mean old Disney villain and blows cigar smoke into the van before slamming the door shut. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Three days later, Marsha is now working frantically on a meth cooking line in someone's garage. She's the only chubby, tall, white, blonde girl amongst a bunch of Southeast Asian chicks, and all of them are wearing nothing but bikinis and surgery masks. A Southeast Asian dude in a Nintendo shirt comes over and starts yelling in Marsha's ear. Dude, in full American accent. Faster, faster! I didn't blow 75 bucks on you at the police auction to have you all screw up! <laughs> oh my god. Exit flashback. Marsha, coming back to her senses. Yeah, college. She shakes it off. Anyway, here's the plan. Her voice fades out as she starts to explain to Glenn and Flyboy, and we transition away. Marsha's coming up the hill towards where Salushi is stationed with his rifle. She does the little friendly, friendly high school style wave and smile, but he does not smile back. Salucci, what the hell do you want? Marsha, mildly flirty. Depends. What are you doing tonight? She starts walking around him in a circle. Salucci, stop trying to distract me, fat Amy. I saw you and those guys doing something weird down there. Personally, I don't give a fuck if you, did the, div the, if you dig those ditches or have a circle jerk or what, but don't get me in trouble with the Sarge when he gets back. Marsha, heh heh, come on, stupid. I'm trying to ask you out on a date. Salucci, a date? Uh, Marsha, yeah, so is the answer yes? Or Salucci cuts her off. Uh-uh, you go sniff some other guy's panties. I ain't falling for whatever weird shit you got. <laughs> Marsha, uh -huh, but come on, man. I like you. You're, like, super hot. Salucci, get out of here! <laughs> Marsha makes a little pouty face and huffs and goes walking back down the hill reluctantly. She meets back up with Glenn and Flyboy. Flyboy seems to have recovered from his injuries. Um, Marsha, damn it, he said no. And I tried to appeal to his caveman side and everything. <laughs> Just then, Luba steps out of the orchard, smoking a cigarette. Luba, what's this problem? <laughs> Marsha. Oh, nothing. Just that soldier guy up on the hill is fucking up our escape plan and all. Luba, oh. Marsha, yeah, I tried to ask him out. I tried to ask him out to the field tonight, but he won't go for it. Luba, laughs briefly. <laughs> I get him. I show you what women do to survive in Russia. Oh, God. <laughs> And why, why, how come every time anybody, including me, does, like, a Russian accent, you always do, like, a deep voice? What's up with that? Just, like, British voice is always, like, higher. What, what's up with that? Um, like, even that one chick in, uh, the Russian girl from, uh, the new Batman movie had, like, kind of a deep voice. Even though, uh, Catwoman was like, ooh, she's just a child. Which I assume, because Catwoman... Looks pretty fucking young herself, and she's like, ooh, she's a kid. So I'm like, okay, was this girl like 16 or something? Probably like 15, 16, 17, something in that range, you know? And she had like this deep ass voice, you know?
Okay, where was I? Um, she turns and goes marching up the hill. Salute you when he sees her coming. Yeah, yeah, I already told your little friend to get lost, so don't bother. Luba interrupts. Tonight you meet us in field, when moon is full. You meet with us and Marsha. Don't be late. <laughs> oh, you meet with us and Marsha. That is from Russian class, because... In Russian, when you say, like, me and somebody else, you don't say me and somebody else, you say we and somebody else. And then, it's funny, because in class, I remember one of my uh, classmates was like, why is that, you know? Why don't you just say, like, me and them? Why, why do you say we and them? And the teacher was like, because you're not alone. <laughs> anyway, uh, then, before he can say anything, she pops open the front of her shirt, and, in parentheses, we only see her from the back, but... Uh, it, Exit parentheses. She unleashes the pregnant lady titties and he is speechless. <laughs> well, she's like fucking 24 months pregnant or some, something like that. She buttons her shirt back up and walks around him, looking him up and down to make sure he doesn't object. She slaps his ass and walks away. Luba. Oh, God. Uh, do... Oh, das Vidania. Okay. Das Vidania, Melchick. <laughs> She goes back down the hill and disappears. Uh, Salucci so rubs his butt where she hit him. Damn, now that's a real broad. <laughs> Cut over to way over yonder with Luke's crew. They're stopped at a big, uh, big rig truck stop out in the middle of God fuck nowhere, doing target practice by shooting things off the shelves. Um, of the busted-ass diner, uh, through the already broken windows. Kind of like a carnival shooting gallery, except not. <laughs> Luke is beside Carl, showing him how to shoot. Luke, you don't do it too soon, you understand what I mean? You, you can't be scared to hit your mark. Live with it a while, before you hit the <laughs> before you pull the trigger. <laughs> what the hell? Carl pauses to take in the advice, then he puts the .22 rifle up to his eye level and picks off a jar of maple syrup from inside. The glass jar shatters cleanly off the shelf. Luke, good, keep practicing. Meanwhile, Rick is watching the two of them, dying a thousand deaths. Luke moves on, saying things to the others until he notices Rick idling and watching Carl from the other end of the line. Luke comes over, growls, Something wrong with your head, Sheriff. Get back to work, we ain't done here yet. Rick just stares back at him. Luke, I said move it! Right when it seems like Luke is gonna smack Rick in the mouth or something, Peter steps in. <laughs> Peter to Luke. Give him a break, Sergeant. The sun's just making him weak, that's all. Oh, the sun's out now? I, I, I picture it to be nighttime for some reason. Luke grumbles. Hmm, only half convinced. Uh, alright, fine. Take him around the back and give him some water. Don't be longer than five minutes. Peter, yes, sir. <laughs> he grabs Rick by the sleeve and pulls him around the back. Rick, holding his head with one hand. My kid. My kid. He's trying to turn my kid into a killer. Peter, just don't think about it too much. We'll get you guys free sooner or later. He pours some water out on his hand and pats Rick's face with it. <laughs> Rick, weirded out emoji face, wakes right up. That was a little intimate, my man. <laughs> I know, he couldn't just, like, hand him the water. He, like, poured it on his hand and then he's like... <laughs> this is how you know I was fucking smoking weed. It's all very, like, sensual, you know? There's a lot of, like, touching. Like, it's just a very sensual story. Because when I was high, that's what I wanted. Oh, Peter laughs it off. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I just got caught up in a dramatic moment. He hands his canteen to Rick, and Rick takes a sip of it. Rick, thanks. He hands it back. He sighs. <sighs> this whole thing is just weird. I mean, part one was weird, too, but now we're going back through the time warp to Atlanta to catch a Nazi? Really? What kind of shit is that? Peter, it might make more sense than you think. R Rick, how? Peter, we're not really hunting a Nazi, you know. The Nazi is nothing more than a costume. Something that Luke strives and lusts after catching. Like Captain Ahab and his white whale. Uh, Rick, dot dot dot. Come again with all that? <laughs> Peter, Moby Dick. It's a classic. Anyway, whatever. It'll hopefully, make all, it'll hopefully all make sense in due time. Let's go back before you catch some hell. Rick, yeah, we should. Things are crazy enough already. <laughs> Peter, that's the truth. They smile weakly at each other. The end. Alright, I think I have time for one more chapter. Uh. My god, everything's getting so, like, messy. Oh my god.
God. I need to get a new binder. The folder ain't cutting it. Okay. Where was I? Uh, uh, episode 5. A short episode. Oh, okay. That's perfect. Uh, cut back to the treehouse. The governor is on the back porch, scrubbing the last of ladies' clothes in a bucket of water. The gov singing, singing idly. Do, 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 water walking Jesus, take me away. <laughs> Hands up, wrings out the last garment and hangs it on the line to dry. The governor, nothing like a good job, well done. He brushes off his hands on his pants and heads inside. The governor sniffs a little. Is that gasoline I smell? Oh, that's from the crow, isn't it? Um, he looks over and dun dun dun, he sees Coco laying with his head in the oven <laughs> with a rag by his face and a gas can on the floor. <laughs> yeah, how does she have an oven? In a tree house. I mean, I guess it's... It, you can just put gas in it, or wood. I don't know, whatever. The governor, holy shit! He scrambles over and pulls Coco out into the floor. He yanks open the collar of Coco's button-down shirt and starts blowing in his mouth, trying to do some fucked-up-ass backyard breed version of CPR. <laughs> just then, as he's freaking the hell out, Lady pops back into the tree house. She puts down her bow and arrows and a bloody sack full of squirrels, which she carries proudly. Lady... Ooh, what game you boys be playing? You wanna try? <laughs> the governor panicking. This is no game! Coco's trying to kill himself! The lady turns serious and jumps right into action. She runs to her shelves full of jars and bottles. She pull picks out a couple little snake oil type things and grabs a sharp knife from the kitchen drawer. The governor nervously. What are you gonna do? Oh god, this is another stoner moment right here. She, <laughs> she grabs a metal milking bucket off the floor and puts it in the governor's hands. The governor, what are you gonna do? The lady doesn't answer. She gets on top of Coco and straddles him. She slices open the whole front of his shirt so his chest is all bare and cuts open his sleeves too, making him look like a skinned animal on a slab. I mean, she couldn't just like pop the buttons open and like take take a shirt off. But you know, it's for dramatic effect. The governor, what? Uh, she cuts him off by giving him the hand of silence. <laughs> She starts muttering and humming in some foreign voodoo chant. Her That's not fucking- I mean, I don't think it's personally racist. I don't think it's racist, but I could see some people being like, that's racist. Um, her eyes get all glazed over and her head tilts back as the spirit power uh, takes possession of her body. The governor watches in terror and fascination. She nicks Coco's chest in his arms with the point of her knife. Oh, she, so she did cut him, but only a little bit. She takes her little snake oils and mixes them in a cup. Uh, with an artistic and precise grace. Then she pours the shit in Coco's mouth and puts the cup upside down on his chest. With one last prayer in tongues, she claps her hands sharply down on the front of his body and he jolts awake, like in Pulp Fiction, which I've never actually seen. The first thing he does is turn towards the governor and puke violently in the bucket. The governor, ugh, jeez. Lady is back to her regular self. She crosses her arms and looks at them, irritated. Lady, don't ever let me catch you trying that again. I went easy on you this time. Next time you won't be so lucky. <laughs> she gets up and goes over to get the sack of squirrels in an authoritative manner and takes them out to the back porch to clean and fillet. She shuts the door, leaving the two men alone again. Coco is all pale and panting. The governor slides the puke bucket away from them. Why, Coco, why? It's not that bad, is it? Um, Coco darkly. It is that bad. You're just too hopeful and blind to see it. I don't want to live like this anymore. The governor. But we can do it. We can make it work. You just have to give it another chance. Be open. Uh, Coco starts to answer, but before he can get any words out, they hear the unmistakable sound of zombie moans and groans from down below the tree. Both guys freeze. Then they get up and go out uh, to the treehouse front porch and look down over the railing. Sure enough, they see like 20, and 30, 20 to 30 zombies down there milling around, pawing the tree trunk, chewing the bark, and moaning. Coco. Holy shit. They can't get up here, can they? The governor. I don't think so. The lady seems pretty confident, but we're sure stuck up here. Coco. Maybe they'll realize they got nothing to gain and they'll go away. The governor. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> An hour later. <laughs> the governor and Coco are still sitting on the front porch listening to the zombies. They both look exhausted and sick. Lady from inside. Come on, boys. Dinner's ready. Uh, the both of them groan, but they drag their asses up on their feet and go in. Cut to them sitting around her little table with a ripped up bloodstained tablecloth with a pink floral pattern and plates of hot squirrel in front of them. <laughs> that kind of reminds me of uh, Desperate Living, which I saw after this, I'm pretty sure. Lady is saying grace while the two guys look like crap. <laughs> Lady in prayer pose. Thank you so much for all, uh, all your spirit of the forest. 
for the feast of flesh we're about to enjoy. Amen. <laughs> Guys, dream drearily. Amen. Uh, lady goes right ahead and starts eating the squirrel, but she pauses when she sees the guys are just sitting there. Lady, what be this foolishness? First you beg me for food, then you don't eat. Uh, they glance at her and shift around, too embarrassed to speak. Lady, don't tell me uh, when you've been bit by them things. Uh, the governor bluntly. We're junkies. <laughs> Coco, yes. The governor, oh, my head. Coco, my stomach. Lady leans back in her chair and rolls her eyes. White man. She uh, gets up and drags her chair to the shelves. Standing on it, she takes a little jar off the top shelf and dumps it out into her hand. It's a fat joint. <laughs> Lady, all right, you babies. Have a smoke in it. Make you normal again. I don't think so. I think that would make them feel worse. But you never know. Some pe like so, uh, Some people, like, they say they smoke weed and they, uh, like... If they're nauseous, it, like, helps them get rid of their na nauseousness. But for me, that would never work. Like, when I used to smoke weed, even though I was a total pothead, and I used to smoke weed every day for, like, five years, like, when I first, like, the first hour after smoking weed, I could still, like, never eat. My whole body is just, like, very tight. Like, every muscle in my body is, like, super tight, which is why I was good for going on, like, really long walks, because I'd be like, I'm walking, you know, and stuff like that. But then it's, like... Like, I wouldn't be able to eat. My stomach would be like this. Like, the tightest, like, thing ever. And, like, I don't know how people say, like, it gets rid of their nausea. Uh, that's why I liked, like, taking long walks in, like, freezing cold weather. Like, normally I'd be all bundled up, but, like, I'd, like, take a couple hits off my vape. And then I'd be like, oh my god. I'd, like, open up my jacket. I'd be, like, having, like, a tank top, like, on, like, fucking 50 degree, like, days. You know, hella windy. Like, super windy, like, hard-ass wind coming at you. Like you know, um, just, like, haze and, like, drizzling and, like, all this shit. I'd be, like, walking to the beach, like, yeah, I, I feel great, you know, because it would cool me off, because I'd be, like, so hot from smoking weed, you know, and, like, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, where was I? Um, okay, later. All the dinner plates are empty and left in a sloppy pile on the table. The ratty old kitchen tablecloth has now been rearranged to make a fort. <laughs> the treehouse looks like a fucking mess. Like the three of them were playing with a whole bunch of different shit and didn't put anything back. <laughs> That's so true. Now, now I babysit my nieces. Like, I know how true that is. Ladies on the floor with a pillow, passed out contentedly, looking nice and cozy and singing, in parentheses, kinda, really quietly in her sleep. <laughs> Um, pan over to show the guys in the opposite corner of the treehouse, looking hella fucking paranoid and freaked out. <laughs> Coco, pawing the governor's arm. Phil, Phil, what are we gonna do? Um, the governor, I don't know, I don't know, just try not to panic. <laughs> Coco grabbing the governor by the shirt. Christ, man, I think she's dead. <laughs> the governor, dead? Coco, what if the zombies got her? Then she'll be a zombie too. He pauses. That would mean they're here in the treehouse. He and the governor uh, leap up on their feet, hella dizzy and dazed. They stagger to stay on their feet, as from their perspective, the whole treehouse seems to rock and tip like a boat. <laughs> Coco, whoa, whoa. The governor abruptly stops. Coco. Coco, what? The governor. I don't think she's dead. I think she's just really high. And so are we. <laughs> he looks around then, and he sees that he's alone. The governor. Coco, where'd you go? He hurries out into the front porch area. The wind is blowing hella hard and whistling through the trees as branches sway all through the forest. The moans and scratches of zombies can be heard from down below. The governor sees Coco leaning on the treehouse railing desperately, looking down. The governor calling over the wind. Come on, Coco! Come back in the house with me! Coco, all shaky. What's the use? What's the use, man? We're all gonna die eventually. Better to choose your own way out! The governor. Don't talk like that. You're my friend. Come in for the night. We can leave in the morning. Coco shakes his head. No, I'm sick of it all. I'm sick of running and trying to stay alive. I want to be one of them. The governor, don't say that. Coco, I do. Goodbye, Phil. He, cry he climbs over the railing, ready to drop down into the zombie horde, but he hesitates, maybe having second thoughts. The governor comes running over, cursing under his breath, and grabs Coco's hands. The governor, don't do it. You don't know what you're doing. You're not, the you're you're not sane. <laughs> Coco looks him dead in the eyes. I am the sanest man who ever lived. But I will not be tortured. That's from, uh... That's from one of those Bela Lugosi movies. I forgot. Bela Lugosi said those lines. If you're smart, you'll come with me. The governor looks back at him, stunned. Coco grips him tight and... Oh, it's, I think it's called The Raven. Yeah. 
Um, he's like, I am the sanest man who ever lived, but I will not be tortured. Yeah. Anyway, the governor looks back at him, stunned. Koku grips him tight and braces his feet against the tree, pulling back and trying to pull the governor over the edge with him. You know, like in that Evanescence music video. Yep, that's a classic for a millennial that will live for all time. The governor pulls back. They struggle against each other in a tug-of-war for life and death. <laughs> the governor. Let go of me, you maniac. I don't want to die. Then all of a sudden, out of the raging windstorm, a flurry of black feathers comes down. A big-ass crow flies between them. What? Cawing and flapping its wings, clawing them and all that shit. Their grip breaks, and Coco plummets down from the treehouse. He lands on the mob of zombies, and they all hold him up like a stage dive. Coco. Dot, 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 dot. Well, they hold on to him for like two seconds, then they pull him down under the horde and close in on top of him, ending Coco with the good death. Well, I mean, if you consider it good. <laughs> He's still being ripped to pieces under there, you just don't see it. <laughs> the governor stares down at the scene, frozen. The end. God, 21 minutes again, I can't fucking like keep track of this shit. Anyway, that's because my, when my dad was into Walking Dead, he said that like, there's like this trend where usual like under usual circumstances, but I can't vouch for it because I didn't watch the show. Like I've said many times. Oh my God, I hear them doing donuts out there. It's so rainy. It's so overcast and rainy and drizzly right now, and they're doing donuts. Anyway, whatever. Well, I know when I go out there later, I'm gonna see like all those like marks, like the circle marks on the intersection. But anyways, where was I? Oh yeah, so my dad said that in Walking Dead, under normal circumstances, like it's not every time, but usually like um, if it's a character who's like considered good and people like and you know, they're like a, kind of a main character, or part of the main team or whatever, that they have the good death, which is where you don't actually see them die. The zombies just closing around them, you know, and they like hide the fact that they're being like killed, like right, what happened right here. But if it's somebody you hate, like a villain or whatever, then they show them being ripped apart by zombies. That's what he said. But anyways, okay, let me end this for now.